In this next section, we want to look at potential and kinetic energy and how we go about solving problems just based on potential and kinetic energy so that we can then start to look at conservation of energy and back at some of the work problems involving the change in energy. Potential energy is stored energy. It's the energy you were looking at in your lab um, on gravitational potential energy. Here we have gravitational potential energy, or we can label it PE, sometimes label it GPE, depending on how specific we want to be, is equal to MGH. These are all variables that we're very familiar with working with. Potential energy is a type of energy, so it's going to be in the unit of joules. Remember these three variables, M, G, and H. M is mass in kilograms. G is acceleration due to gravity, which will be 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth. And is H is a height from a reference point. You get to set the reference point. So let's say we had the ground and we had something above the ground. We can set our height as zero here with our height increasing as it goes up. Anything that was below that point would therefore be negative. You could also set, let's say this had a little bit of a depression down here. And we set this as our zero point. We could also set this as our zero point and then have everything up from there be positive. Or we could set this as our zero point. Color the ball so we don't get confused and have everything down from there be negative. It all depends on where we want to set our reference point for each problem. Now in each case with potential energy, we will generally set the reference point as the ground. However, you can alter that depending on the problem that you are looking at. So let's look at some example problems. Here's a very straightforward one. What is the potential energy of an eight kilogram rock that is 15 meters above the ground? It's gravitational potential energy equals mgh. So our potential energy here equals 8 times 9.81 times 15. Which comes out to 1,177 joules. 50 kilogram mol man falls from a height of 8.5 meters to a height of 4.8 meters. What is the change in potential energy? So we're looking for the change in potential energy, which will be the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. So this will be mgh final minus mgh initial. Or you could write this mg times h final minus h initial. Since m and g are the same, we pull those both out of the equation. So 50 times 9.81 times 4.8 minus 50 times 9.81 times 8.5. So we get 2354.2.4 minus 4169.25, which comes out to a change in potential energy here of negative 1814.85. Joules. Now let's go back to some kinetic energy problems. Remember, kinetic energy is one half mv squared, which we looked at easy earlier. So some basic kinetic energy problems. Kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. So kinetic energy is one half ten times twenty squared. will be 2,000 joules. Now, to apply back to work, remember work is change in energy, just as equally as work is force times displacement, F delta X. So we have a force of 80 newtons, a mass of 
30 kilograms, a displacement of 8 meters, an initial velocity of 0, we're looking for the final velocity. We'll start with work equals force times displacement, so 80 times 8, which is 640 joules. Now the type of energy that's changing here is kinetic energy. So the 640 joules will be equal to one half the mass 30, 30 kilograms, times the final velocity squared minus one half 30 times zero squared. So 640 equals 15 v final squared. 42.67 equals v final squared. v final will be the square root of 42.67, which is 6.53 meters per second. So that's a case of a work kinetic energy change in energy. Now, if you were lifting something instead of pushing it across the surface, changing its speed, if you were lifting it, you'd be changing its height. So there you'd be changing potential energy. And if you're lifting it and speeding it up, you might be changing both potential and kinetic energy. 500 kilogram car speeds up from five meters per second to nine meters per second when a force acts on it for 12 seconds. How far did the car move and how large is the force? So we're looking for a number of different things here. We have the mass, 500 kilograms initial velocity of 5 meters per second, final velocity of 9 meters per second, time 12 seconds, and we want to know the displacement of the car and the force on the car. So we can do a couple of things. We can do work equals change in kinetic energy. So in this case, our work is 1 half 500 times 9 squared minus 1 half 500 times 5 squared. So we get work 20,250 joules minus 6,250 joules. So our work is 1,400 joules of work. Now we know work equals force times displacement. Fortunately, in this case, we don't know the force. We don't know the displacement. So we're going to need to get one of those. I think the easiest one to get in this case, it's easy, actually possible to get pretty much um, either, well, either one, but I'm going to start with the finding acceleration. So V final equals V initial plus AT. So 9 equals 5 plus A times 12. So 4 equals A times 12. My acceleration here is 0.33 meters per second squared. Now that I have my acceleration, F equals MA. So F equals 500 times 0.33. Comes out to 165 newtons. And now I can plug in here. 14,000 equals 165 times delta x. Get 
meters. And there are a number of other ways you could have gone about this. You could have used momentum and impulse to find the force. You could have gone through some other methods of finding the force. You could have used the acceleration to find the displacement and then use that to find the force. So there's lots of different options here. 500 kilogram car traveling at 18 meters per second goes down an eight meter hill. If all the potential energy is lost, is converted to kinetic, what is the speed at the bottom of the hill? So at the top of the hill, we have a 500 kilogram car, an initial velocity of 18 meters per second, and a height of eight meters. At the bottom, we still have a mass of 500. We're looking for the velocity, and we know the height is now zero. So we need to find the kinetic and potential energy at the top. Kinetic is one half, 500 times 18 squared. Comes out to 81,000 joules. Potential is mgh, so 500 times 9.81 times 8. So that's 39,240 joules. Now, the problem has told us that all of this ener potential energy becomes kinetic. So this potential energy here is 500 times 9.81 times 0 it means we've lost 39,240 joules. So the kinetic energy is now 81,000 plus 39,240. Which comes out to 120,240 joules. Now we want to solve for velocity. Equals half 500 V squared. So B squared, 480.96, take the square root, you get 21.9 meters. So that's an example of converting energy. A lot more detail in the next the conservation of energy is about, we'll look at some easier ways to solve conservation of energy.